When I was growing up, there was no internet. No. You had to have a magazine, right? The big magazines when I was young were Penthouse Playboy and Hustler. Hustler was among the worst of them, and that's the first porn magazine I ever came across. Was that? I mean, it's just horrible. That magazine, you know, it's a spread eagle, you know, right, that kind of stuff going on. It wasn't pleasant, but that was my first exposure to naked women's down their parts, and. The magazine I came across happened to have a scratch and sniff centerfold. <laughs> I kid you not, scratch and sniff. I was 17. I was curious. Right between the legs, you scratch, you sniff. Oh, I remember it smelled like blueberries. <laughs> they lied. <laughs> they lied. Okay. And this I know because about a year later, I started dating a girl with a tattoo. She had this tattoo of it was a, a seashell. And she had it right here on her inner thigh. And when you put your ear up to it, you could smell the ocean. <laughs> hey, could you watch the kids so I can go do comedy tonight? And she said yes, because she doesn't know this show didn't start at 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm here drinking and hiding from her all day. It's good. Yeah, everyone told me, Jason, you know, birth is kind of disgusting. It's kind of a, a gross process, so watch out for that. And I don't know what they're talking about. After a half hour pushing, my wife just sort of noiselessly excreted a completely dry nine pound baby girl. I was like, that looked like that hurt, but that wasn't too disgusting. I don't know what they're talking about. What they should have said was afterbirth is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, some of you were ahead of me. <laughs> afterbirth is the part of the process where the doctor goes, hey, that placenta's being a little stubborn. Could you give me a push? And my wife's vagina turned into the Normandy invasion scene from Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> like Omaha Beach in that delivery room. My grandpa was having flashbacks. That was fucked up. <laughs> yeah, the doctor goes, uh-oh. And you never want to hear that from a medical program. He's seen some shit. He's been delivering babies for 18 years. You don't want uh-oh from that dude. Uh, the placenta's not coming out on its own. We're going to have to get that manually. I thought, oh, good. He's got, like, a medical procedure and, like, an instrument. No, manually. <laughs> So they're like, what do you think you're going to name your daughter? Because he's fisting my wife. <laughs> Jeez, Doc, you want to maybe take off your watch? <laughs> maybe throw on a glove? I don't know. I didn't go to medical school, but that is my third favorite hole you're fucking with. <laughs> Some of you didn't like that one. I don't care. I'm going to keep telling it. Here's why. Uh, I was at a comedy show and I did that joke and there's this woman like in the front row and she was like, what are the other two holes? <laughs> and the guy she was on a date with just got up and left. <laughs> I'm going to keep telling it. That's fine. My wife doesn't like me telling those jokes. Don't care. She's always mad about something. She got mad at me this week for something I did that I didn't think it was a big deal. I peed in the shower. Any guy ever do that? Yeah. Yeah. We got a round of applause. This guy's peeing in the shower right now. Exactly. We all do it. It's pipes, right? It's all going the same place. She's mad at me. Okay, in her defense, she was in the shower at the time. And I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, Guys, I don't have a whole lot to say about the election, but it turns out Donald Trump is not as racist as everybody thought he was. Yeah. He said the election was rigged and he wouldn't accept the results if he lost because it was rigged. This whole time we thought he was racist, he was just saying he hates riggers. <laughs> oh, boo. Yeah. See who he was appoints to the Supreme Court and see if you still want to boo me. Jesus. <laughs> That's fine. Let's get the crowd back. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I would dig a hole and climb out. Uh, hey, any of you who don't have kids, 
Um, that's fine. That's a good choice. Don't have kids. <laughs> but definitely don't come up to me and be like, I kind of know what you're talking about because uh, I have a dog and my dog's kind of my baby. If you've ever said that, punch yourself in the fucking face, okay? <laughs> a dog and a baby are not the same thing. They are very different and I can prove it. Here's an example of how a dog and baby are different. If my dog ever ran away, I would look for it. <laughs> Like very different things. My friend's brother uh, does gay porn. And I know it's does gay porn and not did gay porn because I'm a fucking professional and I want to look this up for this joke, right? You can, you can look him up yourself. His name's Skylar DeVos. That's his real porn name, so. Yeah, he went out to California. They're like, where are you from? He's like, Michigan. They're like, what do we know about Michigan? Oh, pyramid schemes. Yeah, your name's DeVos now. So, yeah, ooh, boo. Okay, that's not, the, that's not the part you want to boo. Just fucking buckle in. <laughs> so I looked him up, and he's really bad, but whatever, because he's making money. And, like, when you're a bottom in gay porn, there's not, like, a real tough vetting process. They're like, hey, do you have a butthole? Yeah, all right, you're fucking hired. <laughs> you can start tomorrow. <laughs> So he's, uh, he's doing the gay porn still, and uh, I was proud of myself for doing the research for this joke, looking it up, and then I realized that since I was looking this up for joke research purposes and not jerk-off purposes, and I forgot to browse incognito mode like I normally did. <laughs> so now I really hope my wife doesn't check my browser history, because if she does, she's gonna see that like I'm into gay porn, but like super into just one dude. <laughs> You don't understand! He lives here in town! <laughs> trying to raise a daughter? I don't know how. I'm trying not to fuck up, but it's so easy to screw up. My friend's like, hey man, you better be careful. If you're not a good dad, your daughter could end up on a stripper bowl. <laughs> I'm like, ha 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 ha! You know there are porn stars, right? Like, it gets so much worse than stripper. <laughs> like, Jenna Jameson had a dad. I wonder what that guy did. And I single out Janet Jameson, not because I haven't seen a porn in the last 20 years, but uh, because I actually watched a documentary about her. Um, don't watch it there, you don't see her tits. So there, I saved you two hours. <laughs> but in this documentary, she was like, my dad was never there for me, and that's why I sucked 37 dicks. And I was like, oh no, being a bad dad has real consequences. <laughs> So I watched to the end of this documentary to see if they would give her dad a chance for a rebuttal. And sure enough, at the end, he's like, uh, Jenna's mom left when Jenna was seven, and I was a cop, so I had to work double shifts as a cop to pay for her expensive figure skating lessons. That's it! That's what he did. He's father of the fucking year. <laughs> and his daughter's Jenna Jameson. You understand? I'm accidentally punching my daughter in the face and letting her fall off the changing table and shit. She's gonna end up stripping for ISIS. Uh, so, I mentioned I punched my daughter in the face. Um, there's a real simple explanation for why I said that. I, uh, I hit her in the face. Like, I didn't put my hips in. <laughs> I was like, kapow, I could probably cave her fucking skull in. I'm not going to test that. She could fight back, probably. Um, yeah, but I was buckling into her, her into her car seat, and uh, it was just one of those buckles, and I kind of like slipped and gave her like one of those. Like, hey, there's something on your shirt. Oh, it's therapy, because the only person you know in the universe just contacted your face. I was putting her in her car seat to take her to Fazoli's, and uh, I've never told my wife that, so... Guys, be cool and don't tell her why I hit her. <laughs> because going to Fazoli's to get diarrhea is like the worst reason ever to hit your kid. <laughs> Fazoli's is good? <laughs> That's the objectionable part of the joke. All right, you can hit your daughter in the fucking face for all I care. Slap her around, but don't you dare denigrate Fazoli's. $4.99 lasagna special. <laughs> good. It's $4.99 for fucking lasagna. And you get a drink? They're cutting corners somewhere. <laughs> what else do I have for you guys? I don't know. I'm trying to be a good fucking husband, too. Trying to be a good dad. Trying to be a good husband. I uh, tried making all the stuff I did up to my wife this week, so thought I'd do some chores around the house. Thought I would mop the floor. Thought I would do all the laundry. Thought I'd do all the dishes. I felt like a pretty good dude. She came home. Do you think she said thank you? No! Oh.
No, fuck no, she didn't. She just tracked her wet, muddy shoes across the kitchen floor. Uh-uh! I tracked her into the living room, got right in her face and said, Hey, you need to start showing me a little bit of respect. Which was weird, because that's my mother's words coming out of my mouth, right? <laughs> I think all that housework has turned me into my mother. I've turned into my mother to such an extent that I've stopped having sex with my father. <laughs> uh, calm down, it's a joke. I'm not really gonna stop because of some housework. <laughs> glad I'm married. It suits me. I'm glad I tricked someone and locked her down and <laughs> gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> You bet on the wrong horse. No, it's fine. I don't have any Tinder game, so I'm sort of glad I'm married. I don't really know what Tinder game is. Honestly, I don't really know what Tinder is because I can't get a straight answer, right? I asked my female friends, I'm like, what is Tinder? What's that all about? And they're like, oh, it's for love and companionship. You put in your personal details and Romeo's on there and he's going to send you a message and sweep you off your feet. Talk to my male friends, they're like, oh yeah, it's horny sluts, it's the best. <laughs> Just pick the closest one and go fuck her in the mouth, it's great. That's quite a disparity, and I think the reason for that is men want everything to be about hooking up, and women would like everything to be about dating. And you've seen this as long as there's been an internet, right? What do we have at the very beginning? Like, okay, Cupid, and women are like, oh, it's a message from Romeo. No, it's a picture of a cock, sweetheart, so <laughs> buckle in, there's dozens more. And women are like, I'm sick of guys on OkCupid okay wanting nothing but sex. I want a date. And guys are like, all right, we're sorry. We'll make our own website. We'll call it Plenty of Fish, all right? That'll be for hooking up. You keep OkCupid okay for dating. And women on Plenty of Fish were fine for a while until guys are like, ah, it's my dick. And they're like, no, why? And guys are like, okay, look, this is confusing us. You're sending mixed signals. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a cell phone app, not even a website, a cell phone app. Literally all you're gonna put is a picture of your face and how far away you are. You can't possibly want to date a guy based on those criteria. But women are still like, oh, I'm going on a date with a guy from Tinder. I'm like, is it behind a dumpster? What do you mean on a date? <laughs> it's escalating. What are we supposed to do at this point if women don't want a dick pic on Tinder? What's the next app gonna be called? Some like, cunt hunt? <laughs> You just post a picture of your genitals and how far away you are. <laughs> when we're like, oh, I'm going on a cunt hunt date. Oh, look at this guy. His dick curves up. He must be an optimist. <laughs> out of control, people. It's out of control. Who's whistling? What? Do you want to go on a date? My wife's not here. Fuck her. What? You just whistle because you're drunk? You're trying to get the bartender's attention? You were looking right at me. I can't do it, but she's like, Hey, cut me off, please! I'm whistling during comedy. I need to be cut off. It's fine, guys. This has been a good night. I've had some fun. Uh, you know what? Everybody else that's been up here has uh, admitted to some personal shit. I would admit to some personal shit, too. I smeared uh, peanut butter on my dog's balls today. <laughs> Nothing sexual. I just wanted my dog to have the best night ever. <laughs> He's like, shit, thanks, buddy. I was going to lick those anyway. <laughs> That's my time, everybody. I'm Jason O. Thanks for coming out. You know, I've, been, I've been married now for seven years. I'm in an interracial marriage. Uh, my wife's black and I'm not. And um, I found out pretty early on that not all things culturally cross over. Um, early on, I found out that my wife didn't know what a mullet was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, come on, it's, it's a business front, party in the back. It's a horrible hairstyle. Just think of it as a white person's jerry curl. <laughs> But, but I gotta give black people credit because they know how to let a trend go. Because you don't see too many jerry curls anymore. But, but go to Walmart on a Sunday. You're gonna see a shitload of mullets. <laughs> now the guy with the, the, guy with, the uh, with the jerry curl might ruin a few pillowcases, but the guy with the mullet can't afford a pillow. 
And even if he did have a pillowcase, it'd probably be used as like a window shade or <laughs> carry-on luggage. <laughs> and stuff. But uh, but uh, my wife and I, we don't we don't have children, and uh, that was a very difficult decision. And I can remember my wife being concerned and asking me, "Who's going to take care of us when we're old?" And that's exactly why I love her. It's that eternal optimism. <laughs> she actually thought someone was going to take care of us. <laughs> You know, with kids these days, there's a pretty good chance they'd pull the plug and never pick their head up from their phone. There's an even better chance they'd pull the plug so they could charge it. You know, um, we've actually had people come up to us and said, uh, how come you don't have kids? Which is usually a pretty good question to break the ice when you don't know somebody. <laughs> you know, ne never in my life have I ever come up to anybody and been like, God, why do you keep having kids? You're, you're killing that poor woman. And between your forehead and her eye spacing, that youngest of yours looks like an inbred Count Chocula. As opposed to the much more suave and debonair Count Chocula. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing says like hot ass vampire like some buck teeth. Yep. Can't bite a neck and you can't eat no corn on the cob. He's pretty fucking useless. But, uh. But yeah, it's uh, shoot, we had, we've actually had people come up to us that have said like, you know, children are a gift from God. They're an extension of your love. And the people who usually say that have like really fucked up kids. <laughs> Quite honestly, there's a lot of gifts from God where you wish you would have kept the receipt. <laughs> you know, I actually uh, have a neighbor that has a sign on his front lawn that says, drive like your children live here. I don't have kids, and I ran over that jackass's sign. <laughs> Quite honestly, I think I'm saving the world because his kids are going to grow up to be judgmental assholes that are really good at making signs. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to be there for my wife, you know, and she's constantly on my back for not for eating too much fast food. I don't really take my vitamins, and she has this habit of like trying to slip me vitamins without me noticing it. It's almost like I'm married to a health-conscious Bill Cosby. <laughs> It's like, hey, take these vitamins. <laughs> Holy shit, there are vitamins. <laughs> yeah. Cornerstone of every good relationship is trust. But I'm, I'm trying to do better. You know, I'm trying to get more informed. I read a government study not too long ago where scientists concluded that a person's fast food cravings are actually stronger than a person's cravings for cocaine or heroin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but when's the last time you saw somebody sucking dick for chicken McNuggets? <laughs> You know, maybe a hand job. You know, it depends on the dipping sauce and everything. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's amazing what some people will do for ranch. <laughs> but hey, this is my time. We'll call the MC back up. Uh, keep, give it, keep it going for Brian Borba. My name is Derek Brand. Have a good night. <laughs>
I got a little overzealous, you guys, and I went and bought one of those Magnum condoms. And I don't know if you guys, when you were little kids, have you ever put your shoes, your, your feet inside your parents' shoes? And just kind of clomped around the house? Well, it was a lot like that. Man, I want this guy every show I do. This guy, all right, let's give it up for that guy one time. I'm glad my dad made it. All right. Um, you guys ever sit down on a public toilet seat and think to yourself, God, I hope that's only pee. <laughs> You guys, if you go to an autism awareness meeting, isn't everyone there a special guest speaker? Oh. <laughs> you guys, sometimes I wish that my house was haunted. Because, uh, because after the tragic accident, it sure would be nice to see my parents again. <laughs> my parents aren't really dead, you guys. <laughs> They're, uh, they're, they're good parents. I, uh, the other day, a buddy of mine said, Seth, did you ever get dropped on your head as a kid? And I thought about it, and I got really, really depressed. Because you have to be held in order to get dropped. <laughs> you guys have recently figured out the best way to break up a fight between two guys is to yell, kiss him. <laughs> I went to the bar the other day, my buddy says, hey Seth, you want to do a shot? I said, absolutely. He said, well, let's do a Dale Earnhardt. I said, well, what's, what's a Dale Earnhardt? Well, it's real simple. You take a shot of any liquor, you set it on fire, and then you chuck it at a wall really fucking hard. A lot of Trump votes in here, it sounds like. are in the same faction right in heaven, you know? Let's get to hang out up there. You guys, I think it's weird that Republicans seem so against gays when they obviously want everyone to be a white male. You guys, I got in trouble for drinking and driving. I don't drive a car. I ride the bus. The other day, some guy offered me heroin on the bus. And he was a really good salesman, you guys. He said, Seth, you want, you want some heroin? And I said, absolutely not. He said, you sure? They don't call it hair lose <laughs> And he's fucking right, you guys gotta try this shit. How come whenever I find a girl that's nice enough to give me a blowjob and she licks up my cum, I'm like, God damn, that's hot. But then when my dog does it... <laughs> you guys, I grew up with a lesbian mom. I got made fun of quite a bit growing up. A lot of my friends wanted to come over and meet the lesbians. Uh, so that was kind of tough. However, one really great thing about having a lesbian mom is walking in on her having sex is still kind of hot. <laughs> I had this weird dream the other night. I was wrestling with my mom. And I woke up and I was like, wow, what a weird dream. And wet. And it's weird, because usually we just fuck. Once I have sex with my mom, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's why it's a joke. It'll never happen. <laughs> he can dream, though. <laughs> Whenever I go on dates with girls, they say, Seth, with you, I see a lot of red flags. So now I only date blonde bro or blind broads. God damn it. <laughs> 
You guys ever been so drunk, you're like, God, how do I still have my pants on? Because you're taking a shit? The dog's outside. One morning I woke up. I don't... Thanks, man. Uh, it's good. One, one morning I woke up, you guys, and I had, uh, I had shit my pants. Now, I don't know if I had shit my pants and then just decided I'll worry about it in the morning. <laughs> Or if I did it while I was sleeping. But I, knew, I do know that the next morning when I was picking dried shit out of my legs, that my parents sure wouldn't be very proud. You know, if I took a grenade off a school bus and threw it out the window, and as that happened, it blew off all the fingers on my hands, I could show you the amount of times that I've made my parents proud. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going, you guys. You guys are doing great. I'm glad you're all here. You guys, I got rid of uh, I got rid of cable television. Anybody still have cable television? Yeah. Just a couple, right? Everybody's doing the Netflix thing. I got rid of cable television uh, once I found out that Locked Up Abroad had absolutely nothing to do with keeping a girl tied up in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have lady refs in the NHL, except they're worried that the periods would sync up and last a week. <laughs> you guys, I got DUIs. I went to jail. I've been to jail, you guys. I'm a criminal. While I was in jail, they offered some programs. You could get your GED in there. You could watch cable television. I learned how to give a blowjob with my butthole. <laughs> While I was in there, I almost got in a fight. I was talking with my black friend. My black friend's name was Detroit. <laughs> Detroit said to me, he said, Seth, would you ever fuck a black chick? I said, yeah, absolutely. My dick's way less racist than my brain. <laughs> Now I can tell that joke in part black, you guys. My brother was raped in prison. <laughs> you know, I write jokes for the same reason the same reason that the brothers write rhymes. It's for the white women. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the Middle East, see you, Brian. In the Middle East, in the Middle East, they make women wear things that cover their entire faces. See, in America, we don't like that because we like to see the look on the women's face when we take their rights away. The other day, I went to my girlfriend's house and found a vibrator sitting next to her bed. And I wasn't weirded out by it or anything, I just, I had never seen it, so I asked her, so what's the deal with the vibrator? She said, well, Seth, sometimes I really like having sex with you, and other times I like to have an orgasm. <laughs> well, I'm gonna leave you on this one, it's my worst joke, this one I like to, to leave everybody on. The other day I was, uh, I, was, I was at home in my room by myself, uh, masturbating with a laptop. <laughs> I had the laptop on my stomach so that I didn't have to look at my penis and turn myself off while I was just covering, you know, so I couldn't see it. And uh, as, I'm, as I'm building up, uh, my girlfriend walked into the room, and so I slammed my computer shut very fast. I didn't want her to see what was going on. She goes, well, Seth, what were you, what were you doing? I was, uh, uh, not just finishing up some tax stuff. She said, so you were masturbating, and I said, you're right, I was. And then she said something surprising. She said, well, let's, let's watch it together. Maybe it'll be hot. And I said, absolutely not. But she kept asking and kept asking. And I, and, you know, I was very reluctant, but finally I let her. And uh, I turned it on. She stood up, slapped me in the face, and ran out of the room. I haven't talked to her since. And I guess some people don't like the passion of the Christ the way that I do. 